Hi, my name is Maddie. And I'm Reggie. And we are long-term travelers since 2015. And this video is going to be about Mongolia and our experience there. finally managed to cross the border after trying for a couple of days and it being quite difficult hitchhiking. The Bulgan border which is the most western border between China and Mongolia and when you cross there's the normal taxis and we were like no it's okay we'll find a ride. We'll find a ride. I'm a little bit apprehensive, a little bit nervous that it's going to be quite difficult to hitchhike in Mongolia. It's the least populated country in comparison to its size in the world. So we will see. Um, the first days in Mongolia were very interesting. Uh, it was a bit of a culture shock from China to Mongolia. What do you mean culture shock? Uh, it was a bit of a culture shock from China to Mongolia because Mongolia has so much nothingness and China has so much stuff and people and electricity and internet and cars and Mongolia has nothing for kilometers and it was quite a um, beautiful landscapes and empty steps you mean <laughs> yeah it was beautiful it was really beautiful and the uh, hospitality uh, that we experienced on the first day was amazing um, so we got to the bank we had no money yeah. once again we crossed the border without changing money before crossing thinking oh it'll be somewhere um, but the local town was 40 kilometers 44 kilometers away and by the time we got there, the bank was closing, like, the doors of the bank were closing as we walked up. Um, and the lady said, like, sorry, tomorrow. Uh, and we stepped away a little bit and, oh, what should we do? We need to leave the town then because we need to camp somewhere, which we can do. But um, we've just got into the town. Now we need to get out. And she overhears our conversation and uh, she's like, oh, get in my car, I'll take you to an ATM and uh, the first one doesn't work and she's already told us a hotel a local hotel is like twenty dollars for the night which is crazy expensive for our travel budget so she's like oh come and stay with me we're like, oh, okay how much like, will that cost she's like oh nothing it's for free so we go with her and uh thinking expecting i don't know a flat or a house or something i don't really know what to expect but I didn't expect a year by the river. <laughs> then we got to her house, what we were thinking is going to be a house. But there was a yurt and a small outside building, like an outside kitchen. And that's where we spent the night. We had some, so they cooked some dinner. For we us. had a swim in the lake, um, in the river. And yeah, we had a swim in the river nearby. We spent a lot of time playing with her one year old son, who was adorable and hilarious dancing in the disco. Oh, we, we had a disco for like 10 minutes in the yurt. Just me, Reggie and this little And he had this, boy. this, this um, toy where you push and it starts playing a song and like mm, music having a light music. And he was like, ah. Like so, a little boy, yeah, that's so much fun. And then we said, like, where should we pitch our tent? She's like, anywhere you anywhere. want. <laughs> so grandma decided where we should pitch the tent. Uh, and that was, I think that was a good spot. They had a good sleep. Even without the mattress that you lost a couple of days ago. <laughs> Stop reminding me. Yeah, In so we slept well. 
Got up this morning, had a quick breakfast, went to the bank to say bye to the lady. Bought her as chocolate. Yeah, added her on social media things. Yeah, thank you for so much. Far Mongolia keep on surprising us. <laughs> we had a first, no, actually second hitchhiked car in Mongolia, which first hitchhiked car today. First, maybe 15 kilometers was okay, and then there was no road. <laughs> like seriously, <laughs> so much dust and no road. And Mary was coughing in the back of a car, and I was like. What can I do? <laughs> I've got a cough anyway, so the dust off this dirt track and because I can't breathe through my nose, I'm breathing through my mouth so it's just getting straight to my throat and we've had all the water in the back of the car uh, in the boot, uh, trunk, whatever. So I was coughing uh, and I was crammed in the back seat with three lovely Mongolian men. <laughs> So it's safe to say that maybe wasn't my favourite ride we've had in the last couple of months, but they got us to the 20, middle of 22 kilometers. They got us to the middle of nowhere, so obviously Eagles circling around waiting for us to fry and die and then they can eat us. But there there is a river. You see green just down here somewhere. There is a river. So we're not far enough away from water and civilization to worry. Really for, for you, mom, that you wouldn't yeah, worry too much. Don't worry. Uh, you know my love of risk assessment and my love of safety. <coughs> it doesn't look as dangerous as it is. You it doesn't like you did. look as dangerous. It isn't as dangerous as it looks. That's what I'm Uh, there was a monastery here until 1918 when there was a 10 day siege and a two day war against the Chinese who came and destroyed everything and now all that's really left are the runes that are on the rocks uh, but I don't know if the monastery was like on this or if it's here or, or what but the runes are pretty pretty cool they look kind of old <laughs> So, today we are leaving Hovd, which is like far away in the middle of nowhere in Mongolia. And we spent a few days in Hovd, met Michael, landscape, black and white landscapes photographer. And scientist. And scientist. We met Billy and Sam, who are French Canadian travelers who play banjo. And we met a lot of local people and also we 
met Lee last night, the Israeli guy who's traveling for a few months now. He's bought a motorcycle here in Mongolia <laughs> and, and traveling around. Yeah, you see, I, I, I'm really awakened. It's probably, I don't know, 12? Okay, it's 11, we're hitting the road. The day is gonna be awesome, there's no cars. We camped on the edge of Koft. During that night, we had a hamster or a rat or like some kind of small fluffy animal going across our tent. Matt is panicking all night. Reggie, there's something outside. <laughs> I wasn't panicking the whole night. It was like half an hour of, is that a dog or a wolf or a person or a mouse? I don't know. And then it was like on my backpack outside and fell between the backpack and my knee. And I was like, there's something outside. But like, oh, oh, it's outside. just the wind. <laughs> it's not just the wind. And then I see this like little animal just crawling <laughs> across the tent. And he's like, hm, boom. This thing goes, Bruh. Yeah. And we're gonna try to hitchhike today and go meet Maddie's friends. <laughs> hitchhiking company <laughs> yeah and then we spent the night in karaoke bar oh yeah sleeping on the on the on the sofas it's actually a karaoke room so we had some wonderful locals singing karaoke next door until midnight and we've got lots of beautiful sparkly decorations and yeah now we're having some breakfast at 11 30 in the morning and need to try and get to Bayang Congo today. It's 6.30 and it's the first hitchhike today. <laughs> And then we got a lift with the chairman of Petrolis, which is a gas station company here. And it was the best ride we could have got for the piece of road, road that we were doing. Actually, there was no road, there was an off road. There's like 12 lanes of off road. Off road piece was really cool because we were doing in some places 130 kilometers an hour in the Jeep. We were actually driving through the Gobi Desert, but it's not sand dunes, it is like... Steps. Steps, yeah, but it was part of the Gobi. Steeps. Uh, this chairman guy was really awesome, really kind, really generous, and very knowledgeable about Mongolia, because he spends his job is to travel to every one of the 400 Petrolis stations across Mongolia. 
by the way, I don't even know what kind of place is this, but this is like the top of the city, kind of like a little mountain. It's like a viewpoint over there. The whole city is around like this 360 viewpoint. degrees around yeah. here. So that's what we're going to do now. Mm. Let's go to the road. <laughs> And we got a car really quickly, a little flatbed, um, just one of these little flatbed trucks. And we were kind of crammed in the back. With, it was a young family. The baby was like a couple of months old, really small. And in the back there was just baby clothes, that's, so so many baby things. And we're just squished in the back with all of the baby stuff. That's when I've really got like freaked out. I don't usually get that afraid, but the so what happened, we were riding I don't know, maybe 90, 80 kilometers an hour. Mm. And front passenger tire just blew. Just boom. And you can see the car is like straight off the road and it's really weird sound like boom, 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 boom. And like all shaking, getting towards the light pole, light beam. And we're like, uh, so that was stressful. <laughs> yeah, we were just chilling. And then um, and the, the road's quite high. There's quite a big and quite a steep uh, slope down to the, the land next to it. Um, so because we quite sharply went down as well, you could feel the truck kind Tilting. of tilt. Yeah, there was a definite moment where it was like, if we roll, and there's if this we little roll, kid in front. Uh, yeah, it could it could have been real bad, but um, it was fine. And then yeah, we're coming off the road and going towards a electricity light pylon thing and then there's a huge rock and then we missed all of it. <laughs> anyway, driver, driver managed to do everything right. We stopped, we changed the tires and we kept on going. Yeah, and then so it took us like five hours to do 200, 250 kilometers to Arbaquia. Um How yeah. is your like opinion in general? How is the hitchhike in Mongolia? Hitchhiking in Mongolia was easier than I expected, but you do just have to be patient. Um, for example, going from Bolgan to Kovt on our, one of our first days of hitchhiking, we spent uh, maybe two hours, three hours without a single car going past. But then the one that went past was going exactly where we wanted to and picked us up and it was no problem. And then trying to get to Bayankongo, we waited six hours and a few cars stopped, but none going directly to Bayankongo. And there's no other town really on the map, so we can't see, we can't understand where they're going. Um, so that was a bit stressful, but it was it was fine. Like you cover big distances, you can camp anywhere, and just restock on food and water in the cities, and it doesn't matter if you spend a couple of days out on the steps camping is it's really interesting for me my my opinion like my how to say overview mm -hmm. different than in any other country because countries the the mongolia is so poor that people expect you to pay for a ride and they don't they don't have that understanding that you are this is the way of your traveling like this the hitchhiking is the style of your travel like type of your travel and you don't pay for a travel and people just expect you to pay so that's kind of downside but another thing you can pay just a little bit money not not as much as the bus and i don't know most of the time we did not pay because we just say like we we don't have money and we're traveling this way and if you can take us so it's important to have a message saying that I am a traveler and I travel. Can I travel with your car for free? If you have this defined straight away and the person says yes, then you're good. If no, then they will expect you to, to pay. Because, yeah, we had an experience with Billy and Sam and a couple other times. But we were always asking is it okay? if we come with the car for free so just to be safe um, also 
I really like the custom in Mongolia. If you stuck somewhere, you go to the yurt and you ask, can I spend the night? They, they will take you in, basically. They're gonna feed you and they can, you can put the tent next to the yurt or they, they even gonna allow you to sleep in the yurt. Because I think the culture of the country is this, is this way because they used to move a lot and a lot of people used to pass. So, and if you would be sleeping in steps, I think it's dangerous and sometimes, for example, in winter it can be insanely cold, so they have this welcoming thing to come to stay with them. Mm. Yeah. yeah, so no matter whose year it is, if you're stuck, like, traditionally they have to let any traveler in and they have to feed any traveler. So... Food-wise, it's not my favorite place in the world because mainly it's just meat and noodles and sometimes they put some carrots in there. The, f the food is... Their food sources are limited. <laughs> so, they, um, the food you get is kind of bland. It's really salty. I remember it being really, really salty. Um, and yeah, just eating a lot of noodles and meat, and that was about it. Um, it wasn't bad food, it was just bland. So it depends on if you're a foodie person, then you might not enjoy it too much. But if you're vegetarian. Or if you're vegetarian, good luck. Anyway, I think this is, this is where we're going to end up this video here today. I hope you enjoy it. Please give us a like on this video. Subscribe the channel on YouTube if you haven't already. And head over to our Instagram at Vagabond Shoe. And uh, follow us on there as well as Facebook, where we have regular updates about what we're doing, including a link to our website, where you'll find lots of blog posts about our travels. The countries we visit, people we met, food we ate. Yeah. Yeah.